What up, watch peeps? Gonna do a quick video on the perils of modding today. As has been a running theme in my modding videos, I think it's important to point out that modding isn't always sunshine and rainbows. You will run into problems, and I, I think it's important to show those as well as the fantastic finished products. So I'm gonna highlight a few recent problems that I've run into, and uh, we'll talk about what I did to get past them or not get past them. If you're enjoying the video, subscribing is a huge help and always much appreciated. All right, let's get to it. I'm Pete, and we are Chillin' With Watches. All right, first things first, let's check. This is my Scuba Dude 710 SE, the all black one. On This is actually the Marinam Tropic that it came on. I think it's silicon, a bit of a lint magnet, but it looks good with the watch. Really cool. All right, so a couple of the problems we're going to look at today. One was maybe caused by me being slightly overambitious. The other was completely unavoidable, and I'm still not really sure of the cause other than a manufacturing defect. So... When I did this build, I have this dual time 12 hour bezel and I thought, you know, it'd be cool. One of those bi-directional, uh, still with clicks, 60 click bezels. So, and there is a way to do that. And what you do is, let's take a look at a, at a normal bezel first. This is off a of Sumo, but same thing. So you see these turned up portions on the click spring. Those will mate onto the underside of the bezel into these indents and basically that it'll slide one way you can even hear the click and prevent it from going the other way that's how you get your clicks now if you wanted it to be able to rotate in both directions but still have a click what you can do and i've seen videos on other people doing this more successfully than i you can you can fold that raised part of the click spring back down on itself basically making like a little little triangle or mountain there and you can see now how that would allow it to slide across in both directions and still be able to sit in these indents and give you some kind of click now it worked to some extent um the action was really tight it was not good bezel action and i like a nice smooth bezel it was really hard to turn and that can be not only a result of the click spring, but also the bezel gaskets. And if you can see in here, there's a couple different thicknesses of bezel gaskets. And here's like a really thin one. So depending on the thickness of the gasket, you can control also how stiff or loose your bezel action is. So I tried a bazillion different gaskets and I tweaked these little bends a dozen times probably <laughs> trying to get what I wanted out of it. And uh, I just was never really happy with it. It was a little mushy, sometimes too loose, sometimes too hard to turn. The clicks weren't real satisfying. So what did I end up doing with that one? I ended up putting a thick bezel gasket in here, uh, lubed real nice and leaving the click spring out all together. And now it has this amazingly oily slick smooth action it's real satisfying to turn believe it or not without the clicks um it's stiff you're not going to accidentally bump it and turn it it's still but when you do get it going it is really nice so you know did i give up on that one well maybe but i've never had a bezel without a click spring in it before and uh yeah, it's actually kind of neat. I, I'm not too upset with the outcome. And if I decide I can always get a new click spring, put it back in there and go to, you know, the original action, 120 click, un, unidirectional, like this has. I was feeling ambitious that day and went for something more, but this one has amazing bezel action. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of happy with the outcome of, of both of those. So the next issue I ran into was while building these two mods, which I've been working on for Random Rob for way too long, so apologies for that. You guys might recognize one of these from the How to Cut a Crown Stem video, but what happened with these was I ran into an issue with the crystals. And you'll see these have like a nice domed sapphire crystal, and they have these thick sloped ceramic bezel inserts. Now. I had these builds all the way done, crystals pressed, bezels on. I was down to the last step of trying to put on the insert. 
And what I found was, now here's the original crystal that was in one of these. What I found was that when you go to pre put the insert on, the insert doesn't fit over the crystal. Like it, it can sit in that tool edge on the top, but it can't, the bezel insert needs to be able to go around the outside of the crystal. And I actually had this thing wedged on here at one point. So you couldn't get the bezel insert down into the bezel because it does not fit around these crystals. Normally these crystals, instead of just having a flat side like this, there will be a step in there. They start out wider and they step in and that is to give clearance to thick ceramic, especially sloped inserts. So I had to, um, yeah, these crystals would not work. I don't know if they would work with a, with a flat insert that sat just in that tool edge, but they should be able to clear around the outside of the crystal and they did not. Super weird. What I had to do is, um, yeah, I, I just think these maybe were early versions of these crystals. They're not compatible with a sloped ceramic insert. They're just not machined for that. I don't know that they would work with flat either, but you have to try to find out. They're a little too tall to sit with a flat insert. So yeah, I just manufacturing defect as best I can think. I had to get new crystals. These are Crystal Time CTO 57 double domed designed to sit with a uh, sloped ceramic insert. All's good now, but really weird problem. I've never run into anything like that before. So I guess the last issue I want to talk about is more of a, I guess a procurement issue and trying to source mod parts online. So I bought this Sumo on eBay. I, I got an incredible deal. It came with this ceramic bezel insert in it, which isn't terrible. It's kind of cool. It's not exactly a match for the dial to me, but I got such a good deal that even if I had to buy a new a whole new bezel and insert, I'd still be okay. I'd still come out on top. And plus it came with the OEM bracelet and a strap code. So, you know, I looked and tried to find just an insert. I, I got this off of here, no problem. And so I came across an insert and I'm, so I decided to pull the trigger on this. And I thought, yeah, that looks cool. That, that should work. And I don't know if you can tell, the lighting makes this kind of hard to see. But this thing is actually, I think this insert was made to go with the Jade Sumo because it has a little bit of a blue kind of emeraldy green tint to it. Not exactly the same as to go with this dial. So I actually found another green insert. The whole bezel assembly is like 135 bucks. But you know, you can get an insert for like, this one was like $10. I got another one for 20 that is on the way. We'll see if that one matches better. If it doesn't, I'm either going to put this back on there or just source a whole new OEM bezel. But man, the headaches of sourcing parts that go with your watch are real. All right, let's take a look at the loom on all these watches before we flip the camera back around and wrap this thing up because loom is cool. Keep the loom. All right, guys, let's flip the camera back around and wrap this thing up. So there you have it, some wacky modding issues. Sometimes you gotta get new parts. Sometimes you gotta maybe change your approach. Sometimes they do all come together perfectly with no issues like this guy, but not always. So I thought it was important to show you guys that. All right, before I let you go, sneaker check. Wearing my Jordan 11 lows. All right, it's not too much trouble. Like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.